Ryobi has a ton of pressure washers out there on the market. Most of them are a vertical shaft or upright unit that have very little options for maintenance. This is a horizontal shaft that is fully maintainable and if maintained well can last you a lifetime. It also comes with a Honda GX200 motor and it's priced right at $700, which is much less than most of its other competition out there. I'm gonna walk you through this unit top to bottom, tell you the few things that I would change to make using this unit really enjoyable, and then I'll go through how to maintain it, and we'll do some testing with it also. Stay tuned. All right, before we go into a deep dive into this unit, we need to say this is a residential pressure washer. It is not built for commercial use. We can go into why in a little bit, but it's built well and does have some commercial parts, which is why you'll see commercial grade listed up at the top. Above that, it says 3,600 PSI, 2.5 gallons per minute. 3,600 PSI is knocking on the door of commercial pressure. And that's what's great about this unit is you can actually go out and clean a ton of items, but yet dial it back so it's safe enough that you can wash your car too if you'd like to and not have a worry about peeling stickers or anything like that. We'll walk you through that in a little bit also. Now 2.5 gallons per minute, now gallons per minute is how fast it cleans something. Your pressure is what it'll clean, gallons per minute is how fast it'll clean it. 2.5 gallons per minute for something like this at 3600 PSI is on the low end. So it's gonna be a little bit slower to clean things than other units out there, but that also gives you a little bit of a safety factor so that you're not breaking things, ripping stickers off stuff if you are working through things. So it's safe for most people who might not be familiar with pressure washers and what damage could be done. Now this unit does have the GX 200 Honda engine, which is great. You have forged internals, it has a net of 5.5 horsepower, and it's a great motor. You'll hear a lot of people take this engine and put it in golf carts, mod this engine, do all kinds of things. It will last a very long time if maintained well. It also has a very large metal gas tank on the top, holds about 0.8 gallons of fuel, so this thing can run for a very long time without issue. Your horizontal pump does have a sight glass in the back so you can see how much oil is in there. That oil can be changed out in five minutes and it's maintainable, although a lot of people that have these pumps never change oil. Just make sure that you have enough oil in there and that it doesn't get contaminated with water during use and you'll be fine. The biggest downside to this is the hose and you can see me fighting with this hose quite often. It is very, very stiff. It does not have any swivels on it, and it is a screw-in style, not quick disconnect. So I'm gonna put some links in the description to the quick disconnects that you can buy to add to this unit, along with a nice rubber hose that's going to flex and bend with you and not fight you the whole time. This hose could actually be dangerous while you're using it because it can knock things over, it can scratch paint on cars, it can do a lot of things. So while it is nice at 35 feet, I would recommend that you replace it, and once you do, you'll have a unit that'll feel much more like a machine that's double the cost and really, really will work well. And you'll enjoy moving around with a little bit longer hose and one that flexes with you, not against you. So you do have quick disconnects though for all your tips. There are five tips up on the top. They range from zero to 40 degrees and you also have a soap tip. Throughout this video, you will see me using this extra attachment that I've purchased a while ago. Uh, Ryobi calls it, I believe, a soap cannon. It's not a foam cannon, but you can switch your soap on and off and then you can adjust from zero to 40 degrees as far as what the spray is gonna be, the fan per se out the end. So this little guy works great. You can use it on cars, you can use it on floors, and it just allows you to get soap in areas and clean things up quite readily. Ryobi always does a great job labeling these units as to how you start them. There is a choke here uh, that is simple on and off to get going, and then 
important to me is the fuel shut off. So when you're done using this, rather than just flipping the kill switch on the other side, turn your fuel off and run the fuel out of the bottom of the bowl of the carburetor. This will help everything from gumming up over time. So before you start it, you'll just turn the fuel on and then give yourself some choke and go. There's a throttle here. So this is not an automatic idle down unit. You physically have to slow the unit down with the throttle and allow it to idle and cool down. That's a good thing because you can also idle this guy up all the way, which would give you the full power. But if you just need three quarter power, you can dial it back a little bit. You can get down to about half power if you wanted to. Anything below that, you'll start to stall the engine as you turn on the wand. On the other side, there's the kill switch that I was talking about, but we'll use that mostly just after the engine has already died because we want to run the fuel out of the carburetor. On this unit, there is not pneumatic tires, which is nice. You'll never have to deal with a flat or replacing them. They are solid, somewhat plasticky, but they are a very hard rubber tire. Everything else here is laid out nice. This is your pressure outlet for the hose, and this is where you would plug in the hose that comes with it to add soap to the unit. So if you're using your soap nozzle, it would suction from that area. Ryobi designed this rear handle to be used in either the rear configuration, which is how you'd use it while you're actually out pressure washing or moving it around, or you can put it in its storage position where it will flip around and really make this a nice small cube so you could push it into the corner of your garage and it'll take up less space. Great for a residential application. Let's get out and do some testing with this unit and see where it falls as far as the advertised specs. Connecting the garden hose up and back is simple. There's plastic around this connection, so it makes it easy to grab onto, even if it's wet, easy to tighten down. Now you can see the hose here, and this is kind of how it all fits together, especially when it's a little bit cold, but it's a mess. And that's why I'd highly recommend replacing it, but it screws into this side and the quick connects here are simple and easy to find. It would make this process a lot easier, especially with a nice hose. We're gonna use the zero degree tip on this test. This is a quick connect, so you just pull that back. It's pushed in. Always make sure by pulling on it that it's fully seated. If it wasn't fully seated, you could actually push the pressure washer handle, and this could come flying out and potentially hurt some Thing that's in front of it. Let's get to turning the water on, purging some of the water and starting this unit up. Starting this guy's easy. We're going to hit the kill switch to on. We're going to take our fuel and turn it on our choke, pull it back. We're going to give it just about three quarter throttle. We're on. We'll let it warm up just for 10 seconds. Hit full throttle and do our test. So the goal here is to test the GPM. We have the zero degree tip on it. We started the engine, hit it to full throttle, and then we marked out in here our one to two and a half gallons. Obviously we had some leakage from all this happening in here and it coming out around the rim, but we can see here that we are just slightly below two and a half gallons. And realistically, with the amount of water coming out, I'm gonna say that this is a two and a half GPM unit without a doubt. This is a successful test. Normally, we would check the pressure of this unit with this pressure gauge. It's meant to go right off the pump onto a quick disconnect. I do not have that fitting at this point in time, unfortunately, so I can't even put it on the end of the wand because it's a different size. So we're gonna forego the pressure test, but from use and from my experience with other pressure washers, this thing is at 3600 or pretty close. So I think it's the real deal when it comes to that. In my opinion, to properly shut down this motor in the middle of a job where you're gonna start it up again, you would bring the throttle back from full throttle to an idle, let it idle for 10 seconds, and then turn the kill switch to off. 
Now if this unit is running and you're going to turn it off for its final use for the day, final use for the month or even year, you would take this gas shut off and move it to the off position and then you'll allow this unit to run for about 20 to 30 seconds until it shuts itself off automatically by running out of fuel. That'll clean out the fuel in the bowl and it won't allow anything to sit in there and to gum up any of the carburetor parts. If you follow that shutoff procedure and also use some stable, which I have linked in the description towards the bottom of my write-up, uh, that will also help you not to have any carburetor issues and help this GX200 Honda to start up fairly quickly. This is a great unit. I absolutely love the motor. Uh, I've actually modded them for uses on golf carts, so I know that they can take a lot of abuse. The pump that's back here is also a Ryobi branded pump that looks similar to many others that are out there. As long as you don't leave this thing running on high and not have the pressure washer in use or the trigger on the wand pulled, it, it should last for a long time. If you let it continually heat up where it's just trying to pump and it does not have the wand open, that's going to be bad for it. So idle it down if you need to walk away for 30 seconds. And if you're going to walk away for more than 30 seconds, idle it down, turn it off, start it back up when you come back. That'll help the longevity of this unit. Also, it does have a five-year warranty on everything except the motor. The motor, or engine, excuse me, has a three-year warranty. So keep the oil changed in here. It takes very little very very little time to change oil in this and it doesn't take a lot of oil you can pump it out by hand there's a, a drain at the bottom multiple fill sections here I know people don't really like getting fuel storing fuel changing oil and that stuff but if you really want a decent pressure washer that's gonna clean your house or get to different areas or really do some good work you need to get gas and for the price of this even with the extra $75 to $100 in upgrades that I'm recommending in the description, I think this is right there and it gives you everything that a lot of the more commercial grade units have and the longevity of the commercial grade units, but at the price of the residential stuff or just a little higher. Is this unit worth more or should I pay twice the amount for this unit than I would a comparable vertical unit? My opinion, yes, because I don't think all the vertical units give you the exact same specs that they're listing. So as this is two and a half gallons per minute, most of them are gonna be right around the two gallons. You might find a couple at 2.3, I think that's pushing it. You might find a couple of them at 3000 PSI. I think that's pushing it. The reason why they go to this style triplex pump is simply because they work and they have the pressure. So. I like these styles. I like that you can maintain them and change the oil in them if need be. You also have the sight glass to see where your oil is at. In most of the other ones, it's uh, cross your fingers. You're not going to do a lot of maintaining and it just works until it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, it's junk. In this case, there's a lot of things that you could repair, replace, or maintain. And I think that's what stands out to me. I like that. And if you don't, I mean, you could hire someone to take care of this and have it maintained in 15 minutes at the end of a year. Very, very simple, very, very inexpensive to maintain also. I really have to go back over this hose. And as you can see, I'm, everywhere I go, I'm fighting with it. And this is how it's sitting at this point in time. Yeah, it's twisted a little bit, but no matter what I do here, it's not going to change. And if I need to bring this around and connect it up to something, it wants to go back up until the point where it will actually kink. And that's just not good for a pressure washer hose. And this is how most Ryobi hoses actually are, which is unfortunate. The rigid hoses were better and some of the commercial grade hoses that you go up to will be a little bit better than this. Even on those machines, I replace the hoses with something nice. It just makes sense and makes it a lot easier to use. So highly suggest that. Overall, top to bottom, I'd rate this guy 4.5 stars. I'm taking it down the 0.5 stars because of the hose and the lack of quick connects. Again, we fixed that in the description. 
Other than that, I'm totally open for questions. Ask them below. I'll tell you anything you want to know that I found about this. I've used this unit for a long time and I've kind of just fallen in love with it because I can hand it over to anyone 99% of the time as long as they use some of the right tips they're not going to do any damage it has enough power to do all the cleaning I could ever want to around the house but it doesn't have too much power where I'm doing damage and the gallons per minute really helps me out with that because I can move over things slower, see what's happening, rather than having something with higher gallons per minute where I'm cleaning it faster and I have to move a little bit quicker to know if I'm damaging or going to remove stickers. I mean, on a side-by-side -side or a uh, four-wheeler, I have zero issues going around it, cleaning it all up, using the 25 degree tip. It's not gonna peel stickers, life's good. I can't say that about some of the other a little bit more powerful and higher gallon per minute units we've had. We've peeled stickers on accident, even being careful. So it is what it is. Here, questions we always get. Should it always be cold water? Yes, I know, that sucks. It would be nice if it was hot water. It can't. Can you run bleach through this? No, you shouldn't. And they're gonna tell you not to. A, it's dangerous. But if you're gonna run any sort of chemical like that, buy this guy. It's like 29 bucks at Home Depot. I'll try to link to it also. Um, and it goes on the end of your wand. What you put in here won't go through the pump, won't go through your hoses, won't go through the O-rings. But no, you're gonna breathe this stuff. So be careful. But if you ruin 29 bucks because you put some sort of chemical through it, it's better than ruining your hose, your wand, your pump, or anything like that. So. Technically, the soap is going to be after the pump when it goes in here anyway, but it still has to travel through all this stuff. And if it's bleach or something that could be bad for all this, use this guy. Appreciate your time, guys. As always, love to hear your comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We appreciate your time. Have a great day.